Hi, this is Dr. Farley. Good morning. Today's blog, I'm going to be talking about um, not a nice topic at all, uh, but something that we need to have a conversation about. This um, study was published in the American Medical Association JAMA in June 18th, 2019. So it just came off the, uh, the press. Um, and basically the title is the suicide rates among adolescents and young adults in the United States from 2000 through 2017. Listen to these startling um, results. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention reported a 30% increase in the United States from 2000 to, through 2016 with, with rates increasing in all ages. Uh, it also talks about a particular concern that there was an increase in social social media use. I'm going to call that computers and gaming, throw all that in the same bucket, anxiety, depression, and self-inflicted injuries. Uh, males are four times more likely to commit suicide than females. And there was a huge increase um, from 2007 to 2014. And again, a, an even larger increase from 2014 to 17. Um, so these are pretty startling um, findings here. Um, I, my personal opinion is every time I hear of a suicide, I always wonder about um, the use of these medications. I believe the medications are extremely damaging. Um, and many times, if you look at the side effects of these, you're going to see the warnings are written right in there. Um, there's a black box warning, and a lot of people under 18 should not be using certain medications. And I think that the bottom line is when we see that a child is having issues with anxiety, depression, bipolar, whatever it may be, lack of motivation, um, lack of focus, attention issues, we don't just throw drugs at it. We have to start looking at what are the underlying potential root functional causes, not letting this person's brain work properly. I would also agree that I believe the idea of social media, um, I, I, I don't buy into so much that social media is creating um, all of this bullying type stuff, but I do believe that we're spending a lot more time on computers, on gaming, which means less movement. Less movement means less activation of your brain, which means your brain will break down and it won't work properly. So if you let a child sit on that computer, uh, or play games for uh, hours and hours and hours. They're not getting the physical stimulus from movement to activate the brain, which in turn dramatically changes the way the brain works and the wiring of the brain. And the longer we do that, the more the brain downgrades and downgrades and downgrades. And then gradually we may start getting symptoms of, I have anxiety, I don't uh, sleep properly at night, uh, my, my digestion is off, I'm constipated, um, I can even show other issues of anger um, and then throw on top of that. Now we've got the whole issue about food. Oh my gosh, do I see kids just eating a tremendous amount of junk? Um, you know, sodas, I'm, I'm in the supermarket the other day down the shore and I'm watching people walk out with two big uh, liters of, of Coca-Cola or whatever the soda is and I think to myself, who drinks that stuff anymore? But the, the a majority of people are. Um, looking at what they're eating, they eat cereal for breakfast. Um, they, they eat uh, pasta for lunch, they have three juices in the middle of the day. Uh, at dinner again, they eat a big pile of rice, um, minimal fruits and vegetables, and, and no one has any idea about what they're putting in their mouth, how it shows up in your brain almost immediately. So um, I believe again that what we do here with these patients is we focus on what's not working well inside of you. We don't take the term anxiety, depression, bipolar, what even schizophrenia. We don't take that term and work off of that t that term. Um, the the wastebasket uh, idea on all of that is it must be genetic, which is not supported by the science whatsoever. And then there's a chemical imbalance in your brain, of which we'll give you a different chemical to correct the chemical imbalance. Um, there's no science whatsoever to support that, and I totally disagree with that. Um, I also think that it's kind of a crazy idea if someone is having anxiety um, that they're going to go through counseling to talk about how to manage the anxiety instead of picking up the hood and looking underneath and saying, what may not be working well inside of this person? And if we get it to work properly, might this symptom of anxiety go away if we give the brain what it needs and remove what it doesn't need? We have to stop looking at these things as psychological in nature and start looking at them more as biological in nature to, to uncover what are the true root functional causes and give these children and ourselves an opportunity to work better, feel better, and have true mental health. So thank you. Have a great day.